How often do you send some digital communications and then worry quite a lot about what the other person might think or receive something and worry about what they intended? I was at the park and I got a WhatsApp from a friend saying that she was going for a big lockdown promotion, which is a big piece of news, very important. However, as I read it, the children climbed a tree and took all their shirts off and started attacking each other with sticks. So I got rather distracted trying to sort that out. And then I brought them home for a late, somewhat chaotic tea. And then we watched Grayson's Art Club, which we we're catching up on, and we read the Ichabog and they had a bath. And of course, I'd completely forgotten about the message and not even acknowledged it, much less responded. The other thing which happened this week was that somebody told me they've calculated it would take five hours, five hours alone, just to fill their Canary Wharf office with all the people who work there. And it's kind of just another reminder how our previous business world with all of our sort of contact and availability to each other was such a risk in a virus. When you imagine those packed trains and buses, those lifts that are centrally controlled that you can't go in until everyone's in, open plan offices without windows and hot desking, conferences and events and business travel. There's just so much going on. We know digital safer right now, but as my WhatsApp message shows, it's not with without risks and not without you waking up three days later sometimes and feeling, oh, I've done the wrong thing and I've got to sort it out. Which made me think this was a good week to think about our communications protocols, both in terms of how we use different platforms, Zoom, Slack, email, WhatsApp and direct conversations, and also the tone and how we communicate what we need. Because a lot of what I'm hearing at the moment is people are working really long days feeling that there's a frenzy to communicate instantly because nobody's got anything else to do and still being drained by endless video calls that they don't necessarily need. And teams are trying to support each other psychologically, but as somebody said to me, you know, I just want a day when somebody senior to me doesn't call and say, how are you feeling in a kind of a meaningful way that makes them want to scream? She's like, I just want to get on with my job. So what's the right balance? And it seems to me that these are conversations that we need to have with the people who work around them, as I've been doing this week, and a couple of thoughts as you have those conversations. The first is from Andy Bounds, who sent out a message this week suggesting that if we cut one hour calls to 45 minutes, that we actually save 12, obviously 15 minutes a day, which is an hour a week and a week a year of work. So if we do that with a couple of calls, we can really make a big difference. The second is I'm noticing that webinars that are half an hour are much more accessible and I feel much more enthusiastic about than anything longer. And actually you can often stay on at the end and talk to the speaker or the host if you've got follow up questions or even email them or call them afterwards. The third is that I'm hearing a lot about people using video much more informally. So instead of dragging everybody onto a call at the same time to explain a complicated idea, making a video in your own time, sending it out to everyone who needs to be involved, and then having a conversation through email or on a video or conference call about what needs to happen as a result. And the final thought is that we can, of course, meet in person one-on-one. -on -one. And someone told me this week that she was really struggling with a new client and realising they didn't live far apart suggested they had an early morning walk in the park and they both got a takeaway coffee. And socially distanced, they talked for a really long time. At the end of it, she said it was like they were best friends. So don't discount the possibility that actually, if you've got tricky conversations to have, that meetings are possible if you're not too far away. Those are my thoughts for this week and I'm looking at my calendar next week. Don't even ask me for a meeting if it's an hour, but do suggest walking meetings because I would love to see you and I do definitely have thoughts on that promotion. Thanks very much.